Hello, everyone. It's good to have you tonight. Let's go ahead and grab a hymn. We'll turn to hymn number one. That should be easy to find. Let's all stand. Hymn number one. My Savior's love. Hymn number one. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Welcome you that are online. Sing out loud with us here on the first. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior love for me all right we're on hymn number one sing it with me on the second here we go for me it was in the garden he prayed not my will but thine he had no tears for his own griefs but sweat drops of blood for mine how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall ever be how marvelous is my savior's love for me you're doing a good job let's pick it up just a little bit more on the last when with the ransomed in glory sing it with me here we go when with the ransom in glory his face i at last shall see twill be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me here we go now how marvelous and my song shall ever be how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Amen. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Our Father, thank you so very much that we can assemble ourselves to gather here tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you'd bless your precious word as it goes forth. Bless your messenger tonight. And Lord, I pray that you are pleased with all that is said and done. Lord, today, as we recognize uh, and honor fathers, but Lord, may we always honor you in our lives and day by day because of who you are and Lord, for what you've done for us. You are the best father of all. I pray for those that do not know you, that they'll come to know you as their savior through the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless us tonight once again in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it is good to have you tonight. Glad that you're here and hope and pray that uh, you are doing well. I want to remind you about, uh, of course, first of all, uh, this week uh, we'll be doing a lot of VBS work starting on Thursday. And uh, if you want to help, then you can either uh, text Bethany, let Bethany know, and she can let you know what time we we'll get here. But we'll be here all day on Thursday, on Friday. And then also, uh, we're going to start at 10 o'clock on Saturday, hope to be done by 2 o'clock, if not sooner. And we do have a VBS meeting this Saturday at 2, or I'm sorry, not 2, but at 10, and uh, right briefly, and then we're going to continue decorating until we're done. But uh, uh, just, just to let you know, obviously, we need your prayers. Don't forget about our Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock. Uh, keep that in mind as well, okay? All right. Well, uh, ushers, let's go ahead and come tonight. Let's get ready. We're going to take an offering. Thank you, men, for uh, doing the offering tonight. Brother Matthew, would you mind leading us in a word of prayer?
God bless you tonight as you give. One more time, please. Hymn number 542. Hymn number 542. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Well, I tell you, the song really says it all. I hope and pray that you know the Lord like that. No matter what you go through, God is faithful and is always there. Come on, lift it up strong. We'll sing the first verse here. Join me together. Here we go. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I Trust him more. All right, you're doing a good job. Come on, let's give it all we got. We'll sing the last verse. I'm so glad I've learned to trust thee. Come on, sing it with all your heart. Here we go. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. Precious Jesus, save your friend. And I know. That thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Well, amen. We're glad that you are here tonight, and you that are online, we're glad you joined in with us as well. Um, realizing that this is Father's Day uh, Sunday and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, we do, as the preacher said this morning, we do have a Heavenly Father, and we ought to honor Him as well as our earthly fathers, and, and if we can, and and so um, I want to preach to you on the subject, fear not. Uh, you know, we're living in a day of, of uh, fear and uh, things that are going on that, that are just, uh, uh, should we say, uh, just completely out of uh, the norm for us. You know, when uh, things are this way, uh, we look at it and, and we say, well, what in the world is going to happen? And many times we look at the, uh, the monetary and, and we realize, you know, sometimes people get fearful of that. Uh, and I, I know that some people even uh, jump out of tall buildings because of the stock market going down and things like that. They're so fearful of, of different things and, and uh, maybe health or, or something of that nature. Uh, just so many, many things that people are fearful about in the day in which we live. But there's one thing that I do know, and that is God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
He has not given us the spirit of fear. And so if we know the Lord, uh, then we ought to be able to uh, listen to the Lord. And when he tells us to fear not, then we ought to be able to go on and enjoy the life and doing what the Lord would have us to do. And, uh, you know, it's in his hands anyway, is it not? Uh, where that the Lord, uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he does different things and everything that he does is for our good, for our benefit, and different things like that. And so uh, we're living in a time of fear. And so I want to just give you uh, several things from the Word of God. And we'll um, uh, mostly be in the book of Genesis uh, uh, tonight. And, and so uh, we see in the book of Genesis, there's uh, many places in the Bible where it tells us to fear not, to fear not. And I just want to remind you about some things that we ought not to uh, be fearful of. And as the Lord says, to fear not. And so if you'll turn in your Bible uh, to Genesis chapter 15 and uh, verse 1, uh, where that we read, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision and said, Fear not, Abram, for I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You know, as you look at this, I do not know if you have ever heard of the term first mention. Uh, I, I think I've mentioned it in a Sunday school, maybe a time or two. Uh, but we see in the book of Genesis uh, what we call the uh, first mention. The first time that it's mentioned in Genesis, it will be carried all the way through until the revelation. And so that is what we call the law of first mention. And here we see uh, in, in the uh, verse 1, uh, we see for the first time, uh, fear not is used. Uh, we see for the first time vision is used in, in the word of God here. And the shield, how that we see the shield for the first time. And as it says there, reward as well. And so we see that it's used for the very first time uh, here in the word of God. And of course we know, uh, fearing not, our words that are comforting. And, and not only that but they're encouraging as we read in the Word of God. Uh, they, are, they comfort us, and then not only that, but we see that they encourage us. And then many times uh, we are reassured uh, of the words that are used by fear not. And, of course, we know uh, from the Word of God in Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 13 and verse 8, I want to start out with this. It says there in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And so what, we, what I want you to understand is what God did for the Old Testament saints, he will do for us. Uh, he, it, it may be a, a little bit different, uh, but God is going, he's always faithful, he's always true, and what he did for them, uh, he will do for us as well. And so we find the saints of God in the Old Testament, they were told over and over again to fear not. And of course, we as well uh, should not fear. And so the Bible telling us uh, here in the Word of God that if you'd go back in chapter 14, you would see where that Abraham uh, was fearful of the enemy. He was fearful of the enemy that was uh, coming upon him. And so we see that God spoke to him uh, these encouraging and, and uh, uh, reassuring words uh, that uh, the Lord would be with him by, Fear not uh, thy shield, uh, you, I am your shield, an exceedingly great reward. And so we see that God says that not only will I reward you, but I will, uh, I will be your shield. And of course, when you think of shield, you think of protection. You think of protection, how God protects the individual. And so we see here, the Bible says, I am thy shield and thy gr exceeding great reward. And so we see, first of all, we see the protection of God and the provision of God that God gives uh, to his people. 
Now, just not any, uh, we're talking about saved people now that know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God says to, uh, uh, to Abraham or Abram, uh, by the way, uh, you know when Abr- uh, Ab- Abram become Abraham? Do you know that? Well, you'll see in chapter 7, uh, uh, chapter uh, seven, 7, I think it is, in, in chapter uh, 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 verse uh, 17 through 19, I think it is, uh, where that uh, God says in his word uh, that he would, uh, he would be with them, he would lead them and guide them and direct them in all truth of uh, the word of God. And Abraham, uh, at that time, uh, become Abraham after Abram. And it was after he met uh, Melchizedek in chapter 7 and uh, in uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 7 in verse uh, 17 and, uh, through 19 where uh, that, you know, the one thing I always said is, is this. He didn't get the ham until he began to tithe. And after Abram tithed, then he got the ham. He got what was left. And so here we see his complete name and you'll look in the Hebrews chapter 7, and you'll see what a great man uh, Melchizedek was. And so Abraham uh, gave tithe, a tenth of all these tithe, unto uh, Melchizedek. And, of course, we ought to tithe as well, should we not, uh, to God Almighty. And so we see here in the Word of God that it says, I am thy shield and exceedingly joy, uh, exceeding reward, and, of course, you know, God has given us protection as well. God has per, uh, given us protection as well. And most, uh, most assuredly, the protection that we have is found in the, uh, in the, uh, um, uh, uh, the armor of God where, that we see in chapter 6 of the, of the book of um, Ephesians, chapter 6. Uh, turn there, if you will, in your Bible. And let's look at some things here from Ephesians chapter 6. I know that you know uh, most of it, uh, but I I would just want to reaffirm to in God's word what God says about the shield. Uh, And, of course, uh, uh, the Bible says that Abraham or Abram had a shield. But we as Christians, we have the armor of God. And so look at verse 10, if you will. In, in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now there is two words, uh, be strong in the Lord and the uh, power of his might. If we're going to be uh, have the protection that God wants us to do, have in our life, then we're going to have to be strong in him and we're going to have to uh, have his mighty power in us, and said, uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's our protection, the whole armor of God against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and uh, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins uh, girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, take the, uh, take the shield of faith wherewithin you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and have, take the helmet of salvation the whole the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so here we find the whole armor of God. And I've always said this, if you leave one uh, item out of the, of the armor of God, it will do you no good. Uh, for instance, if you leave salvation out, what good is it? If you leave faith out, what good is it? If you leave the word of God out, what good is it? A shield is no good at all. And so we see that we are to put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, 
in order to be protected by the wiles of the devil, the things that are going on in this world. And, of course, the Bible telling us here in the Word of God that our enemies are, uh, it says in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's the enemy that we see that the armor of God will protect us from all of the activity that is going on. In our Sunday school this morning, one of the things that we looked at was the spirit world, uh, the unseen spirit world, and how what it does and how it, it worked against Daniel and things like that. And we're living in a day when the spirit world is very active, doing things that, that you know, that has never been done before. And so we've seen the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, God Almighty protecting us with the whole armor of God, the protection that we need uh, from God's word. And so uh, we'll find here the protection that God has given to us, and so we are to put on the whole armor of God. We are to put it on on a day-to-by-day basis. Every single day. You know, I, I used to know of a preacher. I will still know him. I, I don't know if he's living now, uh, but uh, he, he is in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, he always, every morning, he would invite the Lord in, in his car with him. And every morning, but when he got ready to leave, he would uh, act like he was putting on the whole armor of God for that day. You know, that might be a good example for us to follow, uh, how that we could actually uh, put on the armor of God and how that we would invite uh, the Lord to go with us wherever we may go in, in our life. And so we see the protecting hand of God. And then if you would go back into the book of Genesis, uh, I want you to notice uh, there uh, the Bible telling us, uh, again, the book of Genesis. Well, if I can get to the... Old Testament, seems like my, there we go, Genesis chapter 15, 21, uh, Genesis chapter 21, we see another thought here uh, in chapter uh, 21, and notice, if you will, in verse 14, and this has to do with uh, Hagar and, and the, the lad, the uh, uh, Ishmael. And so it says in verse 14, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar and put it, uh, put it, uh, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the, in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the, <coughs> under one of the shrubs and she went and set herself her her down. She set her down against her against him, and and a good way off. And it was there that a, a bone a, a bow shot. Uh, for she said, "Let me not see the death of the child." And she sat over against him and lifted her voice and wept. And then in verse seventeen, and the Lord heard the voice of the child heard the voice of the child, and the angel of God called unto Hagar out of, out of heaven and said unto her, what aileth, uh, what aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. Where is he? And so here we find in this verse, the verse of Scripture that we've read, how that God provides, how God provides. And he provided the water uh, that was so needful during that time. And let me just say this. Whatever you need the most, God will provide that for you. He will provide that for you. Your, your greatest need that you have, he will provide it for you. And so we see the provision of the Lord in these uh, verses of Scripture. And, of course, again, we see the encouraging words of uh, fear not, fear not, uh, don't fear for anything. The angel of the Lord uh, just came and spoke to Hagar, and, and God's provision was made 
And look at verse 7, uh, 19. It says, And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the uh, pot with water and gave the lad drink. And so God provided the water for her. And so we see that that is a great thing, that the Lord is our provision. He provides for us. We don't have to worry about anything. If, if you look in your Bible, which we will not, but if you would look there, you'd see in, in Psalm 37 and verse 25, he said, the Bible says, and we know it quite well, I have been young and now I'm old, uh, yet not, have I not, have, have not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And of course, that's a great testimony of how God provides uh, for his own. Look, if you will, in Philippians chapter 4, in verse 19, uh, once again, how that we see that God provides for his own. And of course, uh, if uh, Dave was here, he probably would be able to quote that. But we're familiar with it. My, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And, of course, that is something that God does. He will provide. And then Matthew, turn uh, in your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse uh, 25, uh, where that we begin reading there in, in verse uh, 25. It says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or yet for your, uh, for your body, what you shall put on, is not, not life more than meat, and your body um, than raiment, and behold the fowl of the air, for they sow not, neither do they, uh, they reap, nor uh, gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? And, and go, keeps on going, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto the stat, his statue? And why take you thought for raiment? Uh, uh, consider the lilies of the valley, or the valley, uh, lilies of the field, and how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like, like one of these. And so here we see that God provides. God provides for him. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, when God says, fear not, then, then we can get on to other things. But so many people are just fearful, and they're worried about this, and they're worried about that, and they don't have time, uh, it seems like, uh, uh, to worship God, uh, do the things of the Lord. They're so busy trying to do this, trying to make money and different things like that uh, to provide for their family, which is good. But we ought to take time for God Almighty as well. And if we will just uh, trust him and look to him, uh, then uh, he will certainly uh, provide for us. He will provide for us. And so we see the Bible telling us uh, the, the, and, and the word of God how that God will provide for his own. And then, of course, we see not only that, but in, we see in Genesis 45, if you'll turn there, and uh, Genesis 45, chapter 45, that is, and um, in verse 3 and 4, and it says there, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, does not my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Am I in the right one? No, I'm, uh, I need to get down into uh, uh, 25, verse 25. Seems like I'm having a little rough time tonight. Verse 25 says, They went out, up out of Egypt and came into the land of Cana unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, jo uh, Joseph is yet alive, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And uh, 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 Jacob, uh, a heart fail not, for he believed not. And then uh, where we see that it says, He believed not. Uh, Jacob was in unbelief. You know, there is something today that unbelief is a problem. People will not believe. 
It's not like Thomas. I'll not believe. They got to see it. They can't just trust God and, 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 and not see it. They got to see it. And so they're like, uh, like uh, Thomas in, in the Bible. But here we see, now if you go over into uh, chapter 46 and verse 3 and 4, it says, and he said, I am God. And he said, I am God, the fa- uh, God of fa- thy father. Fear not to go down to Egypt, for I will, uh, will there t- uh, make thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thy, thy eyes. And so here we see the uh, fear not in chapter 46, how that God said, Joseph, you don't have to worry. Uh, you don't have to be in unbelief. You can just believe me. Uh, fear not. Fear not. And so we see that this is the promise of God. If you'd look at verse 3 and 4, once again, you would see God's promise uh, to, uh, to, uh, jo- uh, to uh, uh, Jacob and, and, of course, to us as well. God's promises are are all over the place in the Word of God in many places that we see the promises of God. I, you know, last, uh, uh, last week, I think it was later in the week, Thursday or sometime, I began to look in the Bible where it began to talk about the promises of God. And so many times I, I just give up on it, uh, where that we see the promises of God over and over in Scripture how that we filled up with the promises of God, and and so uh, you don't have to you know you don't have to look very far to find the promises of God. And of course, uh, if you will uh, look at Hebrews uh, chapter uh, chapter ten, the Bible telling us there in Hebrews chapter ten, it says there in verse twenty three, verse twenty three that it says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. He is faithful that promise. Then look, if you will, in uh, Second, uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians uh, chapter 1, chapter 1 and verse 20, once again talking about the promises of God. And it says, therefore, all the promises of God in him are yea. There's no, uh, every time God will provide and he says yes to every promise. It's true, it's true of what God says here. And it says, in him, amen, and unto the glory of God by us. And so all the promises of God are in him are yea, and in him, amen. They're, they're positive. They're sure to happen. And, of course, we see that in, in uh, 2 Peter chapter uh, 1 and verse 4 where it talks about the great and precious promises of God, the great and precious promises of God. I want you to turn, of all the promises uh, that I looked up in the Bible, uh, this one here uh, stood out more than any other. I don't know why that it did. But if you would look at 1 Kings uh, chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, and uh, verse uh, 56, uh, this really uh, touched me as I was reading through all the promises of God. And uh, verse uh, 56 says uh, this, if I can get there, 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given us rest on his people, Israel, according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of his good promises, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Now there, to me, is one of the most outstanding verses that I've ever read on the promises of God. When you begin to look at it, it says there, uh, he's given to his people, the rest of his people, and according to all that he had promised. He gave them rest and everything that God had promised the nation of Israel. And by the way, uh, the future of Israel is still uh, in the balance, but what he promised he's going to fulfill at the end time. 
He is going to promise everything to Israel, and of course he's going to promise everything to us as well. We don't have to worry about his promises at all. It's going to be there, and it says, uh, 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 there hath no, uh, not failed one word, not one word of all his good promises. Not one word. God has promised us in his word, and he's going to keep it. It's yea and all like that. Uh, but we see that every promise is going to be kept by the Lord. And so uh, we, we simply should not worry about that at all. And, and of course, uh, one other thing, and we'll quickly mention this, and then uh, we'll be on our way. Uh, shortly, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 19, uh, we see that uh, uh, the angel of the Lord came from God and told Daniel, said, fear not, uh, fear not, I will strengthen thee. And, and, and then, of course, he goes on to say, and, and to give you peace. And so here we see God is, will strengthen us. And how many times have we read in the Bible, in the Word of God, about God's uh, strength, giving us strength. Uh, you know, you read about Moses, and then Moses, uh, in the in, uh, verses that deal with Moses, he talks about the strength of the Lord. Uh, we see in, in uh, uh, David, again, we see the, the promise of, uh, of God, that how that he will give us strength, strength in order to do the work that he would have us to do. And so we see that he will provide the strength. Hezekiah is another one. Jeremiah is another one. We read about it in the word of God, how that he had promised. And even to, uh, e even to uh, uh, Paul, the apostle Paul, God had promised him strength. Remember when he says, uh, in weakness, then uh, my, my strength becomes perfect, uh, telling uh, uh, telling. Uh, 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 Paul, that his, in weakness, that his strength was made perfect uh, in strength. And so we see from the word of God. And then Paul says, I am weak, I, I am weak, but I am strong. I am weak, but I am strong. And so he was relying upon the pro promise of God that he was going to give him strength in order to do what the, the Lord would have him to do. And let me just say this about a uh, fear just a little bit about fear, and then, then we'll be gone for sure. Uh, some fear because of failure. Some fear because of failure. They're not going to do anything because they're afraid that they will fail. You know, they won't witness to people because they're afraid that they're going to fail. So what? God can take that failure, and he can turn it into a positive. And so we should not fear that. Failure... Uh, uh, that's just a learning tool. I don't know how many times that, you know, I've looked at the, my life, that failure and things like that, but that was just something uh, to uh, press on and, and do what God would have me to do. And so many times people will look at failure and they say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. I, I'm, just, I'm just not, I'm not good at that. And you know how many times have I heard down through the years people say, I will, uh, witnessing is just not for me because I'm, I can't do a good job. Well, the more you do it, the more, the more confidence you have in yourself, and the Lord will help you and encourage you and, and strengthen you in it to do the job. But many people, uh, because of failure, they're fearful, and they will not do it. And many times people will not do it because not only uh, are, they, are they fearful of failure, but we see that they're, they are uh, afraid of the future, afraid of the future. What will the future hold? How, the, you know, the Bible says in the book of James, chapter 4, how that it talks about tomorrow and all like that and, and different things about uh, uh, the, the, what the future holds uh, for us. And, and we don't know. We don't know one day from the other. But we don't need to be, live in fear about the future. What about our country? Where, where's it going to go? What is the gas price going to be? Fear not. Fear not. Don't fear. Whatever it is, it's God's will. 
in our life when we need to go on and do what God would have us to do. Well, what about COVID? Well, keep on going. God will take care of that. He'll take care of you. Fear not those things uh, for the future. Just live for the Lord. And, of course, we, we as God's people need to learn how to just look at the future and leave it up to God. Leave it totally up to the Lord. And, of course, he is the one that knows the future better than any of us. And, and, and of course, we don't know from day to day what may come forth. But if we will just do what God tells us to do and fear not, live one day at a time, one day at a time, go on and on and uh, going in and to live. And, of course, uh, you know, Psalm uh, 23 and verse 4 Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And he was, ta- he, he was looking at the future as he walked through the valley. And, of course, you know what the valley of shadow of death is, don't you? We're living in it now. At any time you could die, that's the shadow of death. That's the valley of the shadow of death. Anytime. And we need to be prepared. If you're unsaved, you need to be saved. If you're not living for the Lord, you need to live for the Lord. And so on and so forth. But we see that the Bible telling us in the Word of God that we do not need to fear evil, for He is with us. And, and it goes on to say, In thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And of course, the, the rod and the staff, the, a rod is for correction. The staff is protection uh, for the child of God, correction and protection that the Lord will give unto the child of God to lead you and to guide you and direct you through this old valley of the shadow of death. He'll lead you and guide you and direct you, and he will protect you as well. And so we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear. No, don't fear at all. Just live one day at a time. And, and I believe that if we do that, that the Lord would be pleased in our life instead of, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm afraid of doing this. I'm afraid of doing that. Uh, just live your life and, and depend upon the Lord to provide for you, to give you strength to, uh, uh, for you, to uh, provide your every need and everything that you have. Uh, he will give you a, a protection and things like that. The God will do that for his children. He will do that. What are you afraid of? What, 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 are you, what are you most afraid of? Whatever it might be, if you'll turn it over to the Lord, I'm sure that after, after when you, you begin to confess it and things like that, the Lord will say, fear not. Fear not. I'll take care of it. I'll get the job done. And we don't need to fear. We don't need to live in fear. But we need to live by faith in the Son of God that gave his life for us that we might enjoy heaven one day. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. And Lord, I, I pray your blessing upon the, what we've said this evening. And Lord, that you would have your perfect will and way in every heart and every life. And Lord, whatever it might be that you have dealt with us this evening, that we would do what you would have us to do. And Lord, that we would come to the point in place when we would not fear, but we would live in in faith, believing that you are in control of all things, our life, and the life around us, Lord. And we pray that your will will be done. For we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, please. We're going to be singing 162. And if you need to come, you come on. And, of course, if you just want to make an altar wherever you're at, that's okay. That's all right. But just deal with what God would have you to deal with. Are you fearful? Are you fearful of the future? Are you fearful of failure? Are you fearful of things that we need not to be fearful of? Just do what the Lord would have you do as we sing. You come. You you deal, let God deal with you. Speak to your heart, whatever it might be.
coming home, coming home. You at home, are you doing what the Lord would have you do? Are you living in fear? You ought to be where you can say of the Lord, fear not, fear not, don't fear. Do what the Lord would have you to do. We thank you for coming and ask you to just uh, come back and be with us Wednesday night, okay? Brother, come. Folks, I hope and pray that as you walk out of the church building tonight, that you trust the Lord. May, may we not fear. Uh, may we teach our children not to fear, to put their trust in the Lord. We, I don't know about you, but we have a great God. Amen? Amen. And uh, he's with us every, every step of the way. God knows the way. May we trust him. Amen. Praise the Lord. But don't forget about, uh, of course, as Brother Jack just mentioned, Wednesday night uh, service. And uh, not, uh, 7 o'clock, uh, so keep that in mind. Also, of course, VBS. Uh, we'll, we'll start decorating Thursday and all day Thursday, all day uh, Friday. And then uh, 10 o'clock uh, in the morning on Saturday, I have a brief uh, VBS meeting. And then, um, of course, we'll finish up decorating as well. All right, so if you have any questions, you can uh, text uh, or call my, my, uh, my daughter, uh, Matthew Herman's wife. Uh, and let, uh, uh, you know, she can answer probably your question there, okay? All right. Well, let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the precious word of God tonight. Lord, a reminder and encouragement lets us know who you are. Lord, at times of, of trouble, we have a tendency of forgetting that. But over and over again, you tell us not to fear. And it's because... You're in control. And Lord, help us to live that way. Help us not to fear, but to trust you. Thank you so much. Bless us as we go home. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Here's the